But guys, I've been really fortunate this year to test a lot of the top daily trainers on the market. Some of these lean more to the speed side. For example, New Balance Rebel V4. This is a lightweight daily trainer. You could do a lot of fast work in. And then Hoka Mach 6. This is one I've been getting a lot of miles in recently. Super fun, bouncy foam. I took this down to some 540, 550 pace for two mile repeats and it was awesome for that. Earlier this year, I got a 100 mile week in the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. This guy's a little bit firmer, but it's going to be super durable, will last forever. And then, of course, we got the uber protective A6 Nova Blast 4 here, which is awesome shoe for just cranking out some miles. Now, I also want to make sure one of the things I'm doing on this channel this year is testing not just the popular brands like Hoka, A6, New Balance and Puma. Some European told me it was Puma. I don't know if I could continue saying that because I'm American, so I'll probably say Puma. But I've been testing the top brands. I've also been testing, you know, these uh, underdogs called Brooks here with the underrated Ghost 16. But I also want to make sure I'm testing new brands or newer, less popular brands. Like we had Tier on the channel yesterday. Shout out to the God of War. And today we're going to dive into some craft. So it's like my Latin teacher said back at the Groton School for Girls and Boys, you got to read the good books and you got to read the bad books. Shout out to Dr. Reyes. Now, it's not necessarily that craft's going to be a bad shoe or a bad book, but they don't get as much pop as some of these other brands. So I'm excited to tear this open. I will dive into some of the things that make craft a unique brand, what they're trying to do in the road running space, because they are a newer entrant here. And then we're going to lace it up, see how it compares to some of these other guys, and take it out for some miles this morning. Let's get into it, baby. All right, guys. Now, as you might be able to tell from the size of this box, Kraft sent me a few things. So I got the, what is this one called? The Pacer that we're going to be running in today. And then they also sent me a trail shoe which I'm gonna censor that. I'm not gonna pull it out today. But they sent me a trail shoe, one of their their trail releases that hopefully we'll be able to get out into the mountains and test sometime soon. But you know, if I'm doing trail reviews on this channel, we gotta do it the right way. So let me see, ooh, look at these guys. They got these vibrant green boxes. This is like the Nike Volt color almost on these craft boxes. I was not expecting that. Now, my only experience with craft so far, let me show you. Yeah, this is the right one here. My only experience with craft so far has been a hoodie. Actually, it was a hoodie that I got from the Charlotte Marathon. So, this shoe here will be my first craft running shoe. I was actually really interested in the Nordlight Speed that came out last year, but I just, I never picked that up. So this will be my first one. It's the Pacer. We do have the right size here, 10 and a half men's, and we got a little spoiler alert on the box, the black colorway, but let's see how it looks. Ooh, I actually like what they're doing. It's like Tier yesterday had a nice touch with their box. I wonder if these newer brands put a little bit more effort into the packaging for world champions and everyday heroes. That is cool. And then you got this little, this nice tissue paper here, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. It's a guide on running. I actually saw they have a book. It's it's something called like the, the guide book to running and it just says this for hundreds of pages. I love it. All right. Ooh, honestly, it's not, it's not the most exciting looking shoe. I don't know if it warrants a bang, but it's clean. You're not gonna, no one's gonna make fun of you for wearing this. I do that, they do have some other cooler colorways, but maybe we can whisper a bang. Bang. All right guys, so diving into the Craft Pacer here. This is their fun daily trainer, lightweight, everyday running shoe, also designed to be Let's take this thing out of here. What is this thing called? Guys, I'm still, you still need to tell me, what is this thing called? I know somebody out there knows. So designed to be an everyday running shoe and a speed shoe, a hybrid similar to what we see out of the Hoka Mach 6 in New Balance Rebel V4. Now, one of the first things I'm noticing is the outsole here. And if you compare this to, especially the Mach 6, you're gonna see, oops, blooper reel. You're gonna see we get a lot more coverage on the back of the craft here. They extend the foam all the way out to the back, which is super nice. Look at that. And it is a much thicker layer 
than in any of the mainstream lightweight speed training shoes. They've also gone with this beehive pattern almost, which is a really cool look. Kind of weird though. It looks like a the football field in what's the movie? The Batman movie with Heinz Ward as he's running along and then the football field collapses underneath his feet. But hopefully there's no collapsing here and hopefully this gives the shoe a lot more durability. This is a unique thing that they did with this geometric beehive, though. I've never seen that. Now, Kraft is a brand that has some popularity in the trail running space. Some might be an understatement, but they're more popular in the trail running space than the road running space. And so one of the things that they've done breaking into road running and one of the unique things that they are bringing into the road running space is these outsoles, these more built up rubber outsoles and their whole approach to road running shoes is building these gravel bike style shoes. So shoes that can take on the streets as well as take on gravel roads and dirt roads. So this is likely going to be a more durable shoe also handle hopefully wet weather better and any sort of off-road terrain. Now I did say handle wet weather better, but one of the things we know is that the performance of an outsole on rocks and having more rubber, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better in the wet. So we will do a wet weather test with this, see how it does. Now I was on their website. Also look at this. They do have some fire colorways here they have this blue we got the black but they're calling this the most and i don't always read the marketing copy but i want to read some of this to you guys because i think it's helpful because this is a newer brand they said this is our most comfortable performance running shoe designed for runners who demand the best in both stability and speed and the latest px foam midsole technology and so first part here stability and speed what we're seeing is they got a really wide base on this let's compare it to the rebel here for a second a shoe that i thought had a wide base and you can see it's got an even wider base than the rebel this is they're both 10.5 us men's the craft is a whole lot wider and chunkier let's compare it to the nova blast because the nova blast i think is the widest neutral shoe and again wow look at this it is probably wider or just as wide as the Nova Blast. So this is going to be a very wide shoe. Hopefully we got some good stability out there. And then midsole foam here, this is their PX foam. It is a beaded compound. Let's see if we can get a good shot of this. Yeah, right there, okay. Look up at the forefoot. You can see all these beads all throughout here. So it's not gonna be a Piba. Probably gonna be a little bit more similar to what we get out of that Saucony Triumph series of shoes, the beaded TPU. I believe this is a TPE. -E. I will confirm that and let you guys know up on the screen here. Or I know we got a lot of chemical engineers out there. You guys can tell me. Regardless of the material, what matters is how it feels, how it rides. It is slightly firmer to the touch than a Power Run PB or the Topo beaded p or what we had yesterday, the God of War beaded p -backs. Tier calls it the Launch PX. So a little bit of a firmer feel to the touch. That doesn't always mean it's going to ride firmer because the Saucony Triumph, the Power Run Plus they had in there, did a very similar thing. It could have a soft ride, but I think that means it's going to have some nice impact absorption. That's generally how it correlates. And also some better durability. These beaded foams, man, especially the Power Run Plus are super durable. So I'm hoping that we can get a ton of miles out of this shoe. But with this super built up outsole combined with this nice foam here, I'm guessing we will. Now, the other thing I'm noticing is if you take a look at the upper, when we compared this to the Rebel here, and granted the Rebel doesn't have the elf heel, you can see the craft upper is a lot taller. It almost looks like a basketball shoe. Let's compare it to the Mach 6 for a sec. So it's not a ton taller than the Mach 6, but it is a bit of a bigger shoe. It feels like they've gone, and it looks like they've gone a little bit higher up the ankle here on the pacer. Maybe that's to lock the foot in place for any type of off-road adventuring you're going to be doing in the shoe. And I know I'm giving them a little bit of flack for the black colorway. I, I generally don't buy black shoes, but I do think this is going to be nice getting in the black because then we can take it off to, to test it on some gravel and some dirt and not be too particular about it getting messy. Now for the upper material itself, we got an engineered mesh. It's pretty lightweight and lighter weight than you might expect. It's a little bit thicker than what we get on the Rebel and there's no overlays at all here. So no, no plasticky pieces in the front. In the back, even though it is pretty tall, it is a little bit more flexible back here and you don't get the plastic heel counter piece. So that's something to note. There's no plastic heel counter piece up here. You do get, if you can see where the Kraft logo is, 
wrapping around here. You do get a little bit of a heel counter down here, but it's a little bit more flexible. You can see I can push this entire thing down. If we take a look at the Hoka Mach 6 here, I cannot do that with this shoe. The heel counter, the plastic is all throughout here. So we get a tiny bit more flexibility in the craft pacer. And then lacing system, normal, no weirdness going on. I love when brands don't do weirdness with the laces. Let's check out the tongue. We do have a gusset in the tongue. You can see it. I'm ripping the gusset out of the shoe right now. This is the gusseted tongue, so that hopefully that'll be good to have the lock down. Now, I have heard in the past one of the issues with the Kraft Road Running shoes is that while well, their foams have been awesome and they've nailed them, they've dialed it in, they've been able to deliver a really quality midsole product from everything they're doing on the road or everything they're doing on the trail side, one of the issues have been the fit of the upper. So that's something we are going to be honed in on today. How does the upper fit? We'll do that initial step in test. And then also, how does it compare to some of the great uppers we've tried this year? Hoka Mach 6, this has a really nice dialed in fit. The fit is a little bit snug and weird, but it's overall a nice fit on foot. And then same thing with the Rebel V4 here. This guy has a little bit of a wider toe box and a nice fit throughout. So we'll see with the craft, how that stacks up to some of these other shoes we've been testing. Now, one of the things I wanted to highlight before we go are the specs here. And this is gonna be one of the things, again, that sets the shoe apart. We got 40 millimeters of this foam here in the back and 34 in the forefoot for that six millimeter drop. Six millimeters is a great drop point. It's gonna work well for a lot of people. I think it might be my favorite drop, that six millimeters, super close to what we get in the Mach and the Rebel. Those are at five and six. So 40 millimeters in the heel, ton of protection. I'm hoping that this means it will be a very versatile shoe. I'm hoping that the foam isn't too bouncy and too energetic. We do have a nice little bit of a rocker up here at the front, and I'm hoping that gives it some, some nice roll through for faster running. But the other thing is, like the Saucony Triumph, which I'm thinking this might be similar to that shoe from the specs and from the stack that shoe is great for all types of runs it wasn't just a recovery shoe and it wasn't just a shoe for shorter runs or longer runs it did everything pretty well and it was a shoe that i could push the pace in occasionally and it responded well so we'll see how the craft does for that i now want to throw this on the scale and see how it compares in weight to some of these other shoes all right guys we got the scale out here Boom. I also brought my Triumph out here so I could show you guys what I was talking about. So if you take a look at this foam really quickly, you can see it's got the beads all throughout. This thing is also sitting at a 37 millimeter stack. So Kraft is super close. They actually look pretty similar in these uh, black colorways. But let's throw the Kraft on the scale here. Recalibrate. So the right shoe of the Kraft. This is coming in at 264. That's competitive. That's right around where the Boston 12 is. And we did the plated training shoes yesterday, which tend to have a little bit more stack. I guess this has a lot of stack at 40, but those were around 250 to 270. So this is going to be competitive, I think, with some of these other shoes. Let's check the Triumph first. So yeah, this guy is at 290. So a lot lighter weight than the Triumph. Let's see, Mach 6. This guy's pretty light at 230, so that's a lot lighter than the Craft here. Nova Blast, I think, was up at 280, 290. Yeah, this guy's 280, so Craft Pacer, a little bit lighter than the Nova Blast here. Rebel is a pretty lightweight shoe, but let's throw it on the scale just to check. So the Rebel, yeah, a lot lighter at 220 versus up in the 250, 260 range for the Craft, but you are getting more foam, more protection, also, I think more rubber out of the craft than the Rebel here. And then last one I want to throw on here is the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. This guy's at 280. So the craft is in the middle of the weight spectrum here. Let's let's do the spectrum. Spectrum test. Okay. I think it went like boom, 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 uh, boom. Hold on, I gotta put the the Nova Blast back on. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So if we're thinking about these daily trainers, these fun, faster daily trainers here, Rebel is going to be the lightest weight. Triumph, which is a little bit of an outlier here. That's more of a max cushion shoe, but we brought it out anyway. That would be the heaviest. And then the Craft is actually closer towards the middle, and there's about a 30-gram gap between these two. So it would be more like, like this. You got the lighter ones over here, 
you got the slightly heavier ones over here and the craft is sitting at the heavier end of the light shoes all right let's get these things on our feet for a fit and feel test hold up i forgot to put our brooks on this guy's at 286 so between the Nova Blast and the Velocity Nitro, or right around that range. Now, there are a lot of competitive shoes on the market at this $140 price point, and that's why I pulled out all those shoes that I had there. Those are a lot of the ones that were released this year that are $140. And I know that most of us out there are gonna get one of these, maybe two maximum throughout the year. And so part of the issue or part of the challenge is figuring out what the best qualities are of each of them and then who's going to be the prime candidate to buy each because with these different skill sets different attributes different awesome characteristics that each have they're going to work well for different types of runners and so with this one being a little bit of a higher stack shoe with that outsole rubber i'm thinking it's gonna work well for someone who wants protection and who needs a lot of this rubber coverage. So initial step and feel though, toe box is very roomy. This might be one of the highest volume. So it's not necessarily that it's super wide, but tall, it is a very tall toe box. I also have a lot of room up here in the forefoot. And I told you guys, this is one of the issues that Kraft has experienced in the past. The fit of the uppers is a little bit weird and we'll see how it rides but definitely more room volume wise than i would expect which i think might be nice for some of you who have higher volume feet now the basketball shoe upper thing as i was saying it really does feel like a low top basketball shoe the heel counter here rides up on my ankle a lot higher than any other running shoe that I've tried. And I think that's because they want this to be able to go off road and also add more stability. So we'll see how it does off there. But my foot feels like it's sitting very deep in the shoe and is very cuddled, coddled, embraced. There's a word I'm looking for. It's not, it's at the tip of my tongue, but it's not coming up. And my foot is just wrapped up in this upper, which is interesting feeling. Now, initial step in with the foam here, it does not feel like the softest underfoot. So we'll, we'll have to see how it rides, but I'm thinking it might have a little bit more bounce to it than I'm anticipating. And now right foot here, left foot, right foot. That's the craft motto, right? Yeah, as I slip my foot in here, it feels very flat which is interesting because it does have a little bit of rocker at the front, but it feels very flat and a little bit on the firmer side on step in versus some of these other shoes. And I'm actually gonna, let me grab the Nova Blast. I won't go through all of them, but let me grab the Nova Blast and a few of these other shoes. All right, so I have the A6 Nova Blast here. I'm gonna try this one on in comparison because this is also a shoe that has a kind of built up upper. So yeah, step in feel of the Nova Blast is much more comfortable. The foam feels a little bit softer underfoot. The upper also feels softer and like it's coddling my foot a bit more than the Craft Pacer. And you can see Nova Blast also has a lot more padding out here on the back. And I think there's, these are similar widths. So stability feels pretty equal. Nova Blast does feel like I'm standing a lot higher up here. Now these are billed, the Craft Pacers are billed as more of a speed shoe versus the Nova Blast is more of this protective daily trainer, almost a max cushion shoe. So that's probably why there isn't as much comfort in the upper of the Craft. I would have liked if they added maybe a little bit more padding. The tongue is a little bit padded. Back here, we got a little bit of padding, but putting these on side by side, the Nova Blast just feels a lot more comfortable. Let's try the Rebel on, which is on the other end of the spectrum here. So Rebel is gonna be this is a little bit of a lower stack shoe. We only got 30 millimeters in the heel versus 40 in the craft. Let's see. So Rebel feels softer, lower, more flexible. I can move my feet around more. I also think we got maybe a tiny bit more width with the Rebel upper here, but again, volume. And I thought the Rebel was a nice wide toe box, but the volume here on the craft is a little bit better. So as I'm doing this little roll through test, What's interesting is that on the pacer, you have the rocker, but 
it only really starts right up at the front here, almost like a toe spring just right up at the forefoot. Whereas the Rebel, it starts a little bit earlier on here. So you get more of this gentle roll through versus the Craft. I'm thinking, I'm wondering how this is gonna be for landing closer to the heel and midfoot because it is really an aggressive forefoot rocker. All right, now let's put on this other Craft. And with, well, a few things. With how these shoes look, with the rubber coverage and with the stability, I'm thinking this is a shoe that's also gonna be pretty good for walking and for regular everyday life activities, at least for me, especially being in this black simple colorway, it's not a flashy shoe and it looks pretty clean. So I'm hoping this is gonna be a good walking shoe. My current walking shoe is the Brooks Ghost Max and I don't always test running shoes for their walking capabilities, but for these daily trainers, I think it is an important test to do. And the reason that it's an important test is that a lot of us who have busy lives, responsibilities might put on our running shoes in the morning and then we got to go to school drop off. We got to go to work. We got to do what we got to do. We have our shoes on for an hour, 90 minutes before we do our run. Maybe we have to drive, get back in the car. So we might have our shoes on for two hours, whereas we're only running in them for 40 minutes. So I like to see how they feel when we're not running. Now, this is... It's a stiff shoe on the bottom. I was not expecting that. With everything I've heard about this foam, I was expecting it and how they're calling it a lightweight shoe. I was expecting it to feel a little bit softer and more flexible. I gotta tell you, underfoot here, it is not soft at all. It is not flexible at all. It might break in a little bit, we'll have to see. But I'm thinking this is gonna be more of a fast running shoe than it is gonna be a daily trainer to plot along. And so they, they are using words like responsive and lightweight to suggest that it's designed for speed. They even see that right in the marketing copy. But with the 40 millimeters of stack, I was expecting a little bit more step in comfort closer to what we see in the Nova Blast because it's hard to find a 40 millimeter stack shoe that feels this firm. It's almost like Saucony endorphin shift. Yeah, man, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I got a pair of black Air Force Ones on right now. <laughs> we are gonna have to see how these ride because they're a lot firmer than I anticipated yeah all right well so plan for the run this morning is 10 miles I had two 20 mile double days back to back so I did 22 in the Mach 6 on Tuesday I took Monday off and I'm trying to get 100 this week so that always comes back to bite me in the mileage tracker later so we got 22 on Tuesday in the Mach 6, 20 yesterday across the Mach 6 and the God of War Speedworks. And now today, I think I'm just going to do 10 this morning. So 10 aerobic miles in the pacer here. I'll probably start off at a nice gentle everyday running pace and then maybe progress it, maybe add some strides at the end. But I want to test these as a daily trainer, so I'm not going to do a crazy workout in them. They have 40 millimeters of stack in the heel. They should offer a good degree of comfort for a normal everyday run. And they also should work well for picking up the pace here and there. So that's the plan for this morning. I got to change because I'm still in my hoodie, but I'll be back out here in a GIF. And then we're going to put these pacers through the paces. Oh man, guys, I had the running warehouse page up on my phone because I was looking at the specs. And by the way, if you need new running shoes, please go through Supwell and use the Running Warehouse links because that helps benefit the channel. But I had this page up and they say the PX Foam is redesigned for superior softness. So, so far that's not what I'm getting. And if you're, man, if you're gonna put that in the marketing copy, it better be superior and it better be soft. So we'll, we'll see once we take their, these out on the run. And I have no problem with the firmer foam. It's just, if it's not gonna be super soft then you shouldn't say that and underfoot here it is not feeling super soft so far but they're also saying resilient rebound and from how these feel it does feel like we're going to get some nice pep in our step so we'll see superior softness resilient rebound that's some nice consonants there we'll have to see how it does out on the run i did a quick quick little fit check when i was in there these actually look pretty fire on foot got the tracksmith joggers on if i put on the camber hoodie it's gonna be a vibe all right we gotta get this run in, let's go. All right, boom. We got 10 miles 
at exactly an eight minute pace or an 802 pace. That's not the definition of exactly, because that's not exactly. One hour, 20 minutes, and 52 seconds. Now my legs are feeling a little bit beat up today. Oh, actually I remember. The first thing I wanted to tell you guys was when I was out there, I realized what these feel like on foot. And I'm not talking about the ride. I'm talking about the upper situation. It is exactly like one of those old Clark's chuckas from 2014. You're right, you guys remember this? They go up here and then they got the tight fit and the, they only have the two laces. That's exactly what this is like. It, it feels like running in a Clark's chuck. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm gonna pop this other one off and then I'm gonna grab my slides and let's go do this wrap up. And guys, look at that. I had one pair of shoes sitting outside the box right here, the Velocity Nitro 3. And it's funny because I think that's the shoe we're gonna talk about today. All right, guys, 12 miles in the craft pacer here, the Clark's chuck -a boot of running shoes. I mean, look at this thing. The side profile here is uncanny. I think if we took the silhouette of this, blacked it out, put it up against the silhouette of the Clark's chuck -a, you would not be able to tell the difference. Anyway, I don't know if it was Running Warehouse or if it was Kraft who said the superior softness and put that in the marketing copy. And by the way, I love Running Warehouse, that's my partner. But whoever it was who said that, they, that's not right. This is not a soft shoe. This is a firm shoe. If you like the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3, if you like the Adidas Audi Zero SL, if you like the Brooks Hyperion Max, this is going to be the shoe for you. I go plated, I go non-plated. I like testing everything, running and everything, and I can find the good qualities of every shoe. And there are a lot of good qualities with this shoe, but just right off the bat, I need to tell you guys, if you're expecting a superior soft shoe, as Running Warehouse says on the page, this is not gonna be it. So, good qualities of this shoe. It is extremely cushioned. It feels like you got 40 millimeters of stack here, but because you get the wider base, it is very stable, very planted, and one of the widest shoes that I think we've tested this year. And because you got that wide base, that also comes through in the upper here, so you get a nice amount of room up in the forefoot. So I think this is gonna be a great shoe for any bigger runners who need more support and those runners who might have a wider foot or a higher volume foot up in the toe box here. So if you're a fan of Brooks shoes, but they tend to be a little bit narrow for you, or same thing if you're a fan of Puma shoes and they tend to be a little bit narrow for you, this is gonna be a great choice. Now out there on the run, the foam is on the firmer side as mentioned, and look at this we don't get much pliability much bending in this shoe it is very rigid now that makes the shoe really shine for faster running and it reminded me of this guy right here the puma velocity nitro 3 again this shoe is a little bit on the firmer side more rigid i have 100 miles so this shoe is broken in but firmer more rigid it doesn't have that super soft sinking in feeling and it's in the high, mid high 30s, so nice and cushioned as well. So I think if you like the Puma Velocity Nitro 3, or if you like a firmer, faster feeling shoe, then the Craft Pacer might be a good choice. So for the run today, we did 10 miles, average eight minute pace. I'll throw the splits up here, but I was feeling pretty beat up and I was hanging out for most of this run, probably around 820, 810, and then I did some strides at the end. And for those strides, that's when the shoe really came alive. Also, any other parts of this run, as I was picking up the pace, that's when the shoe came alive. And I do have to say, about 30 minutes in, took a little bathroom stop, and when I restarted the run after about four miles, I felt a little bit more bounce than when I came out of the gate. So I do think this shoe is gonna benefit from some more mileage, and we'll do mileage updates as it starts to pile up, probably closer to the summer, as I mentioned yesterday. Unfortunately, my mileage will be coming down for the next few weeks, heading into the marathon race, and then it's gonna take some time to ramp back up. So probably won't get this to 100 anytime soon, but I do think as we add more miles on the shoe, it will soften up. That's what tends to happen with these shoes, especially this type of shoe where when you get further into the run, it softens up, like the Puma Velocity Nitro 3. That's what we're gonna see here. Now, to this midsole foam, it's not exactly like anything else that I've run in. It doesn't feel like an EVA, it doesn't feel like a Piva, it doesn't feel like a beaded TPU, but it does have some combination of all of those attributes where it has that firm, structured support feeling that you got from the EVA, and then it has that nice bounce that you might get from a beaded TPU 
CPU or a Piva. And it's definitely nowhere near as soft as a beaded Piva, but when you pick up the pace, when you run, you can feel a lot of impact absorption for mashing down. And that's why I'm saying this is gonna be a great shoe for bigger runners. This is not gonna bottom out. It's not gonna have that feeling like when you're running in a Rebel or a Saucony Norfin Speed 3 and you can feel the foam compressing all the way down. That's not gonna happen in this shoe. So tons of support paired with the stability means this is a great choice if you're a runner who needs a little bit more protection in an everyday running shoe. And now in terms of where this fits in the market, this is again like the Mach 6, like the Rebel, more of a hybrid daily trainer and speed shoe. It's not the lightest weight compared to the other shoes we had, but it was on the lighter end of the spectrum. And I think if you are gonna buy one shoe and want it for daily miles as well as faster stuff, this would be a great choice if you're a bigger runner and need or like that firmer foam feeling. But again, if you like a softer touch in your running shoe, this is not gonna be it. This is on the firmer end of the spectrum. Now, to the outsole here, it is bone dry today, so I was not able to test any grip on this, but it performed well downhills with cornering felt planted. I will have to take this out for a wet weather test, but I do think the durability is gonna be really solid because you can see we cover a lot of this back here and we got a nice thick layer out here on the front as well. Now to the upper in the fit, aside from the wider toe box and the higher volume here, it's not a completely dialed in fit. It feels like there's a little bit extra room in the upper here. I don't mind it, but I know some of you, if you are really particular about your uppers, might not love this. But I think because this is a shoe that's gonna work really well for bigger runners, the little bit extra room here might be nice for higher volume feet. And it might be nice if you're planning to take this as a winter running shoe. I know we're a little bit farther out from those months, but with this outsole grip here, I think it should perform well in the winter. So if you're gonna stuff a wool sock in here, you should have enough room for that. Now, to the back, heel lockdown was great, I have to say. Any weirdness or slightly more material that we get in the shoe, that's only going on in the front of the shoe. The back of the shoe is fantastic, paired with that wide base, really nice heel lockdown and fit towards the back. And then we do get a little bit of that caboose, the foam hanging out of the back here, and a slight rock, so felt really nice for heel striking. And I think if the foam can break in and soften up a little bit more, this will become a really nice shoe for relaxed running, as well as some faster stuff but today felt best when landing mid to forefoot just because of the speed orientation or the bias that this shoe has for faster running so for me hanging out at that about eight flat pace i felt that that was a little bit too slow for the shoe it is going to be a faster daily trainer i would have liked to be down at around 7 10 7 flat probably that's where the shoe is going to feel most at home or if you're a bigger runner putting a little bit more force into the shoe will make it come alive as well so overall this is a nice firmer option for runners who need more support, who want a little bit more cushion. It's gonna be great for faster running. So anything up to marathon pace, maybe even a little bit faster. Not gonna be the best if you want a shoe for relaxed miles or if you like soft feeling shoes, but there's plenty of those on the market. Don't get this one if you want something soft. Get the 1080, get the Gel Nimbus. But if you're a bigger runner who wants something fast to replace a Saucony Endorphin Shift or to replace a Brooks Hyperion Max, this is gonna be a solid choice. Now we will get some more miles on it to see how the durability goes, also to see how the foam softens up, but at $140, that's cheaper than all of those shoes I mentioned. So if the durability can hold up, if the foam can soften up just a touch, but retain that bounciness over the 100, 200, 300 mile mark, and we see this rubber protecting the foam, then I think this is gonna be one of the better value options in that firmer segment where bigger runners tend to live. So, all right, guys, that's all I have for you today. All right, guys, one more thing. I used to call this section odds and ends, but I think I might call it one more thing because I keep popping in every day with something to add on the end here. But I need to eat my lunch. I got the pasta with the veggie grillers and also shout out to my mom who gave me this pen for graduation. And I know she watches every video. So hi, mom. But what I wanted to do was a little bit of a nerdy durometer test. So as I mentioned, these three down here, Audi Zero SL, Brooks Hyperion Max and Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 are some of the firmest shoes I've run in. I really enjoyed these two. This one, Brooks Hyperion Max, didn't work for 
my foot strike because of the heel cutout geometry back here. And then these are some of the softer shoes I've run in. So 1080 V13, amazing shoe for just plodding along, slow recovery pace. Same thing with the Gel Nimbus. I didn't have great durability on this guy, but really comfortable shoe. And then Hoka Mach 6, this is a newer one that's come into the rotation that's a little bit of a faster, but still soft shoe. So I want to test the durometer on all these and the craft pacer here and see what number it's gonna give us. And then I also pulled the Nova Blast here, which is kind of in the middle, not too soft, not too firm, but I would say it's pretty close to the pacer and that maybe it's leaning to the firm side. So these are lined up in terms of feel where we have the firmer ones down here, softer ones down here. I wanna see what the durometer says. It's not a perfect test. The data is never perfect, but it should give us a good read. All right, I'm gonna do my last few pours of coffee and then let's get into it. All right coffee is complete and i got the shore a durometer here so this is the main one you can buy it on amazon i've seen a few other people using this guy and so closer to zero is softer and then closer to 100 is firmer so let's test it on the table real quick you can see this is giving us a reading of 107 on the table so that is very firm now let's try some of these shoes let's start with the firm ones and then move over to the soft ones and so guys, the reason I don't do this all the time is because it's not actually, I don't know, I don't always trust the data. So this has given us 46 on the Audi Zero SL. Let's test in the forefoot, 52. I'm gonna do a few readings here. Let's test the bottom now, 51. Okay, so Audi Zero SL is about a 50. Brooks Hyperion Max, we're getting a 46, 47, test the forefoot, 53, oh no, that wasn't actually on it, 47, and then test the bottom, 40. So this guy is a little bit softer in the 40s, so 50, and then let's call this mid 40s, we can average out all of them. Now we got the Socket Endorphin Shift 3 here, which a lot of runners found too firm. We got 45, uh, let's focus this. Yeah, 43, 44, 45 in the heel. 45, 46 in the forefoot. And then on the bottom, let's find a nice chunky spot here. That's That doesn't seem right. You got It's hard because we got to find a good spot for it. All right, right here. 38 on the bottom. I'm actually gonna take another bottom reading. Yeah, we're still getting 39. So the bottom foam is a little bit softer than the side foam. So let's call this low 40s, mid 40s, and 50. So I think my, so far my feel analysis has been pretty accurate to the data. So now let's test the, actually, you know what, let's save the craft pacer for last. Let's test the Nova Blast here, which I think is in the middle of soft and firm. This one might be hard because it's got all these waves in the midsole but ooh, camera down 41 like i thought kind of in the middle all right testing the forefoot now we got to zero this out testing the forefoot now after some camera drama 45 in the forefoot 46 45 and let's get a nice spot right here on the bottom 40. So pretty similar to that Saucony Endorphin shift in that it's low 40s on this guy. Now, moving over to the softer ones, Hoka Mach 6 here. I'm guessing this is going to be 30s. Yep, 37 in the heel. It's actually 37 stack in the heel too. Wow, 43 in the forefoot. That's interesting. Let's test the bottom. 38, let's 38, 39. Let's take another reading in the forefoot because that seemed a little bit high. Yeah, now I'm getting 38 in the forefoot. So Hokamok 6 is high 30s. Now A6, gel nimbus here. Wow, this one I'm getting a 49, 50. That is really interesting. 49, 50. Again, a 49. And then let's see here, 
46 on the bottom. So that's a little bit of a surprising one. The FF Blast and the Gel Nimbus has given us a high reading. I'm wondering if it's because of how many miles are on this and maybe it's lost a little bit of that softness because the foam is compressed. I'm not sure. That's interesting. Can't argue with the data though. Analytics don't lie. All right. Last one before we do the pacer. This is the Fresh Foam X in the 1080 V13. This guy's coming in at 39, close to that Hoka Mach X foam. Again, 39 in the forefoot. And then let's zero it out. Yeah, and then low 30s on the bottom. It's interesting. I think some of these bottom foams are a little bit softer because of the use. So 32 on the bottom. All right, now let's test the craft pacer, moment of truth. So what we've seen around the spectrum here is that softer foams are mid high 30s, firmer ones are going up to about 50. So let's say 40 to 50 is really the continuum. I'm guessing our craft pacer is gonna come in around mid 40s, but let's see. All right, make sure this guy is zeroed out. Yep, 42 in the heel. Forty-one, forty, forty-one in the forefoot, and forty-six on the bottom. So let's get another bottom reading. All right, now we got forty-one on the bottom again. So closer to the firm end of the spectrum for sure if you remember our mock six here this guy was uh this guy was in the 30s so definitely not as soft as something like the mock six so if you're expecting the craft to feel like the mock six or to feel like the 1080 it's not going to give you that it's going to be giving you a feel closer to one of these guys so if you liked these shoes down on this end of the table here i really think you're going to like the craft pacer all right, guys. Well, thank you for watching this episode of One More Thing by Subwall Running. We will be back tomorrow with another video. You guys like my NPR voice?